Hello, today is June 16th, 2009, and we are in Natick, Massachusetts. And this tape is part of the Morse Institute Library's Continuing Veterans Oral History Project. My name is Joan Craig. Our cameraman today is Dan McDermott from Natick Pegasus. And we are privileged to have with us today Joseph A. Tedisco. Welcome, Joe. Thank you for coming. Thank you. May I ask you when and where you were born? I was born at uh, Boston Lion Inn uh, and on uh, March 17, 1919. So I consider myself uh, a pure <laughs> of uh, the other people that are born on that date, see. So the that, Irish people, I tell them that the that true you, Irish people are those that are born on the 17th. We're liberal. We allow everybody else to become Irish if they want to be. That's wonderful. <laughs> that's wonderful. And did you grow up in the Boston area? In East Boston. In East Boston. East Boston. And where are you currently living? I'm currently living on Walnut Avenue here in Natick. And how long have you lived in Natick? Uh, we came up here in 1964. Have you seen a lot of changes in Natick since you came here? It, a, a lot of lousy ones, too, let me tell you. In what way? <laughs> well, take a look at what you see, traffic. A lot of traffic. <laughs> yeah. I mean, the, uh, well, I don't want to go back over that where I was uh, going to the... Uh, Every time they had a hearing on that, I would appear and tell them how lousy that would be, you know. The traffic would be it's, worse. Well, take a look at it. It See? is very busy, isn't because it? Because they didn't, they didn't realize that Route 9, okay, when, of course, they weren't born at that time, so they don't know anything about history. But it was built to take uh, 40,000 motor vehicles a day. See, on the day that the state turned it over to the people, it meant 40,000. That was it. They expected time, but just on that day. There's and it a kept lot building more than up. That. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Yeah, it is. In fact, I don't live too far away from it. It's just my, uh, my land. The other person's house was on the thing. And although uh, we can't go out there and have a barbecue anymore because. Uh, on your land? Yeah, because of the, the uh, noise. The noise from Can't even hear down. yourself talk. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Are you married? Yeah. How long have you been married? Uh, <laughs> it'll be 60, uh, 65, will be 66 come July 4th. 66 years, congratulations. <laughs> on the 4th of July. On the so you, you were born on St. Patty's Day and you get married on the 4th of July. Yeah. That's unique. Well, let me put it to you this way, as unique as it is, that happened to be a situation where I got uh, a uh, uh, get out of the, uh, went getting a vacation from the Army, see? So the first time I went, it was, it was cold as blazes, the coldest uh, weather they had at that time, see? We couldn't even go out, we'd freeze, no matter how well you were dressed. and. Uh, after that, I went back and I told the uh, person, the, the uh, uh, person that takes the uh, evidence of whatever you're doing when you walk in and out. And I uh, says, "Look, I says I got a deal that I got to get married on, <laughs> so I want to know when I can get my next uh, vacation and go." because I wanted to get married, so Your I did. next leave? It was on the next leave on the 4th of July. And do you have children? I have a son and a grandson and a daughter. And where and when did you enter the military? I gave you that date, I believe. Uh, yes, it says here, March of 1942. Yeah. And where, where did you? Enter. Uh, we entered it from uh, this section here, where the uh, uh, government has the uh, the uh, what do you call it there? The, the armory. The the not the armory. The um, where they're uh, looking into things that uh, they can do for improving stuff, way on the other end. It, what town? It was in this town there, where uh, was the uh, receiving area for everybody. 
like a even depot, further, huh? like a depot. Yeah. In Natick. In Nat well, all over the other side of Natick. Framingham. Fra not Framingham. It was just. But in this I, Metro West yeah, area. Yeah, in the Metro West area. Okay. And uh, we we got there. We stayed. Uh, I think it was a couple of days, and then we boarded a train. And why? And, and traveled all night. <laughs> Why did you decide to join in March of 1942? I didn't decide. I got called. We all had to sign up. When, <laughs> so you got called um, up. How yeah. old were you at that time? Uh, About how old? Let's see, 19, 20, 20, about 22 years old. And between high school and 22 years before you got called up, were you working or were you continuing your education? What were you doing at that time? I was time? doing both. I was working, mm -hmm. and on the days off, I would go to a college and uh, take uh, lessons. Some and, college uh, courses? Yes. And where were you working? I was working at the uh, Walt Dan Boys uh, Club at that time. And what was your, your job at the Boys Club? I uh, was an employee there that eventually became the assistant uh, director. And what college were you taking courses? Do you remember? Uh, yeah, it was named after a president. I forgot now, but but today, it's the uh, the uh, school of uh, Boston uh, School of Law. Boston School of Law. That's what it became in the mm -hmm. thing, and that's where I graduated. When I went back, uh, you know, I had to leave to uh, do my duty, and then uh, when I got discharged, uh, my wife said, uh, you, you have enough uh, credits, uh, why don't you become a lawyer? We'll get to that right. in a little bit. What branch did you join, and did you have a choice in what branch? Absolutely not. You, you went where they, t where they told you to go. And, yeah. and what branch did they tell you you were going to? The Army. The Army. Yeah. And did you have friends that were going with you at the same time, or family members? Uh, no, I don't think, I don't think so. Uh, but I don't recall on that. Eventually, I ran into friends that lived right by my... <laughs> Near your home? Yeah, mm -hmm. yeah. But that was after we had my, uh, you know where I got my uniform and uh, things like that. And, just and you said then you got on a train. Yeah. And where did you go on the train? Do you uh, remember? Virginia. And did you go to Virginia for basic training? Uh, basic training on um, artillery. On artillery. Had you ever handled? That was 155, big, big guns, uh, big artillery. They, you call it a gun, you get. <laughs> but it was really more. It, it Almost was, like a cannon, or well, well, that's what it was. It was a cannon, but they didn't want to call it a cannon. It was an artillery piece, a one five five. It was, uh, you know, the uh, ball was about from here to there. It, so a good eight feet. It was a. Uh, let's put it this way: that in order to fire, the the that cannon, it took a number of men to do it. You had two men sitting on top of that. Uh, one getting information from one section and another section so that they could uh, elevate and turn that uh, cannon around. And there was the uh, first, uh, the person who had the uh, uh, lighter there that uh, you think, you see, it uh, had two men that had to carry a 90 pound round. And somebody else, and they had a somebody else running beside them once they set it to push it in. Push it in, right. And then another person running with 20 pounds of powder. My goodness. And the thing. When we went there, they, those uh, cannons were, uh, uh, they weren't up to date. The enemy had better, uh, uh, you, you know, things that, motor vehicles that run, ran better than ours, I mean faster, and the same way with the carriages of the uh, artillery, you see. So, so they took we, it out so and they brought it back again and it uh, resolved so that it could go 40 miles per hour instead of 10 as the NW1. So before we get into that, along with artillery guns, what other type of basic training were you doing at that time? 
Well, we were uh, basic training and marching and getting uh, in, um, in shape. Uh, so in the morning, when you uh, woke up after breakfast, you would go out and uh, you'd see this uh, section of uh, metal that was going up and so forth. And the, uh, uh, you had to jump up there and grab one one thing and to keep going on it that way to get in shape. See? And were you in good shape to do that or was it tough for you? I was in good shape. I could also get in the square aprons and throw a lot of pounds, a lot of punches. <laughs> what do you mean by square aprons? A ring. A ring? Were <laughs> Boxing. You, were you a boxer before? Or? Well, I was being trained for that, yeah, and I played football and, and we played football. We didn't have the, uh, this was during the depression. We take a bag, stuff it up with papers, and that's how we played football. And at that time, they had what they call a flying thing. You could jump at a fellow that had, was running away with the ball and knock him down. A lot of them got hurt that way, sure. even the professions. Yes. And, uh, and we did that on the street where uh, it wasn't tied or anything. It just had those nice uh, bricks on that, and not bricks, but they were around it. Boulders. Yeah. Boulders, yeah. And you would fall on Yeah, we'd fall so on that. So you were pretty tough. Up. Huh? You were pretty tough. Oh, yeah. So during basic, In was fact, it during... In fact, the, the, uh, the uh, when I go for a, a haircut, they said, boy, he said, what the heck, you get all of those uh, marks on your head and stuff. I said, those were the rocks that bounced there <laughs> <laughs> when we were throwing rocks at each other. <laughs> now, in the Army, and they knew you were a boxer, did you do that in your spare time in, while you were in the Army also? Doing what? Boxing? No. Or was no, just before? No, you, you, that was your time in the Army was all uh, taken care of by the uh, captain and uh, whatever he had to do and the lieutenant and the sergeant. So after Virginia in, in basic training, then... And, and you had already heard about what was happening in the war overseas. Yeah. So after Virginia, where did well, you go? Well, in fact, we had a nice captain over there the first, uh, in the first time. He, uh, uh, he, he had been in the uh, Army for quite a while. He was an elderly uh, individual, but he was a wonderful captain, the best I ever had. Because if there was a man there, he would not ask you to do anything that he himself wouldn't do. Mm -hmm. And he would come on the uh, marches with us when we had to go climb on the, on those uh, things and, you know, go out. He'd be the, the first there. Yeah, he he'd be the first, too. yeah. The first to do it. And how long and were you Of course, you in he didn't win the, uh, the lieutenants that he had. In fact, that's how they got rid of him with the uh, colonel. Because they didn't want to have to do it? Well, he, he, you see, there were four uh, units there of 250 men, mm -hmm. plus lieutenants and, and a captain and other people. And, uh, you know, we bragged about what he was, how wonderful he was compared to the other uh, the things. So, it went, you know, it didn't sit well with the other uh, officers. So uh, yeah. then after that, he was yeah. gone? They, yeah. Well, he, they transferred him someplace else, yeah. And after Virginia? Uh, Georgia. And what did you do in Georgia? The same thing. We, mm -hmm. uh, you know, had additional uh, uh, training where we dug uh, foxholes and things of that nature. See. And how long were you in Georgia? Uh, quite a while. Uh, I didn't keep uh, track of that. Uh, mm -hmm. But we, did, we were there quite a while before we moved again. And uh, we moved down to Florida. Down to Florida. Down to Florida at right, that. And uh, we were, uh, uh, well, my view, <laughs> whatever somebody else might want to think about, it, sidetracked because uh, they uh, said that uh, what we were going to do was to help write for, uh, uh, from land to air defense. So we got uh, uh, electric. Uh, Big, to be honest, to look at the enemy uh, airplanes coming coming around during the evening, see, with the uh, 
gadgets where we could take it and follow them all the way around. Almost like radar? Yeah. Mm -hmm. That and was before radar. The, uh, it came in shortly after that. So were there maps of some sort also that you had to learn? No maps. No. Just go out there at nighttime and you wait until our own people were coming by where we were training, see? Yeah. In fact, the first night that uh, we were up there, uh, I, I was the, uh, the other three uh, units were all, all out there. Mm -hmm. And I was the first one that gave the signal to turn the light on, and there it was, that airplane right in the middle. Somebody says, who did that? <laughs> so you were basically tracking the enemy? Well, or it, it was to learning track. how to do it, yeah. And then after Florida, what did you do? Uh, after Florida, uh, we, we went to Australia. And, and how did I had two Sundays. We went over the line. <laughs> oh, you did. Did you yeah. have any kind of a ceremony going the, on? The your way uh, Navy to did, not us, the okay. Navy. And oh, they were rough. <laughs> and how, were you going over by ship? Yeah. And what was it like for you going on a ship for that length of time? I, in previous interviews, some of the gentlemen have said they didn't have a problem, whereas others were very sick. How yeah. about you? I wasn't. <laughs> you weren't sick. No. So, well, because you see, I, uh, uh, in East Boston, we used to go on the uh, ferry boat, and uh, no matter what it was, you got trained in a, in a sense so that, you know, so when you were going over to Australia, did they explain to you why you were no, going? No, no. And once you got there, did you have additional training? Yeah. And what kind of training and was that? We got the uh, natural training that we uh, had right along. You, you, you did uh, exercises with your uh, rifles. You went out there and fired your rifles, and you would get... Uh, uh, what what you were doing, what, what the, how many times you hit the center of <laughs> And were you good at on the range, on the rifle range? Oh yeah, we, were, we had a nice time on that. Did they give you information about what you were going to face and what kind of enemy you were going to face? You, we not only got to face on that, told about it, uh, we were uh, informed even when we sat when the group and they they told us and uh, in fact our first captain that we had uh, would call us in the morning we'd sit around him and uh, he'd explain what uh, was going on and I he talked to me once because he said do you know you know he, he said well do you know where this country is in that country see and uh, I was well trained on that he said yeah so he says you, you will give the lectures every morning <laughs> So, and was he talking about Asia at that time? Uh, not at Asia at that time. Uh, this was mostly what was in the um, thing was uh, Europe. And, and at the time, did you think you would be going to Europe, or did you feel? Not when, not when I uh, went uh, to Australia. I knew that uh, we weren't going to go to the thing. I was hoping I went to Europe because I had my grandfathers there and my grandmothers. They were in, in, in Italy? Italy? yeah. But instead you got sent south. Yeah. Um, and we had trouble there in, the, in Australia because we didn't get along very well with the Australian men. Why? <laughs> Why is that? Because you were handsome young men and there were a lot of women, or was it? Well, let's put it this way: there were the uh, they had their army, uh, their army too, that was out. I mean, the uh, the fact is that uh, uh, we were well paid, I and see. they weren't. Okay. So actually, their uh, their girls wanted to come with us because we could give them a better time. <laughs> And did you, were you able to socialize with the girls over there oh, uh, yeah. in your free time? Yeah, a lot of them could. I didn't. I, uh, I was married at that time. You I were already good. married yeah. before yeah. you went over. That's right. Okay, because you had said earlier that, that yeah. you wanted to take some time off yeah. to get married. Um, what was Australia like for a boy coming from the city? Well, it, it was one of those uh, things that... Uh, was a lot different in, in the, the uh, 
they spoke English, but the English was a little different, like the uh, English you would hear from uh, that in England, sure. see? And uh, their uh, uh, methods of uh, doing it, and they ate well. And in fact, the, uh, you, you could go to a restaurant over there, and uh, little or nothing is what you would pay for it. In fact, I remember going where I said, Gee, look at those peaches. I says, I think I better buy a dozen of them. And I asked, I said, we don't sell them by the dozen. I said, what are you selling them? He says, buy a number eight bag. I said, give me a, <laughs> what a bag. A, a number eight bag? <laughs> yeah, for 25 cents, you should see what I got. Sure. <laughs> I had, I, I, you know, I said, couldn't eat all that. All I wanted was a few, so I, you know, saw the guys coming. I said, here, help yourself. <laughs> Were you in a camp in Australia? Yeah, we had a we had a section, yeah, that we were in. It was ours, yeah. And and so daily you would do some training. We would do training every day, and uh, then toward the evening time uh, you would have off. So have so some you, free yeah, time in the yeah. Evening. So you could go to the movies and uh, mm -hmm. things like that, or you would have uh, you know our own people coming in uh, from. Uh, California and uh, then because that's where we bounced off from California to get to Australia. So you you had mentioned earlier before we went on tape about some of the training and some some of your other army soldiers sort of holding back from ta ta training. Talk about that a little bit. Well, it wasn't holding back. It was just the fact of uh, thinking of what you had to do that was, uh, you know, something you never thought of doing. I mean, you, you, you look, there's a man there, okay? And uh, you're going, you're saying you, you got to go up to him, and if you have to strangle him, if you have to put your, uh, uh, you know, shove your gun into him or shoot him in the eye or whatever, you know, something you never did. So, you, you know, that was to say, you know, that's a human being. You know, it's, I'm not hunting animals. And so you'd hold back a bit. And what would they say to, to some of those who would hold back? Oh, you get blasted for that. You get mm -hmm. blasted for that. And some of them, if you, if you hesitated too long, <laughs> you'll be doing that at night. <laughs> and, and, there, and there would be a concern that if you didn't, if you didn't, Protect yourself that you would be dead. Absolutely, that that's what happened, let me tell you. Sure, sure. So how long were you stationed in Australia? I don't know. It was quite a, quite a bit of uh, time on that. I think we probably spent about four or five months, maybe even more. And during that time, did you see any soldiers coming back from combat who were then going home? And were you able to talk to them at all? Uh, no, okay. no. If they were coming back, at least from what we saw, or what I figured out, was that uh, anybody coming back again that was in bad shape, they weren't going to let you look at him and or say, talk hey. to them. Mm -hmm. <laughs> well, they were afraid you might say goodbye. <laughs> they have to come hunting for you. Sure. <laughs> and, and after Australia... You know, they had police there, the... Uh, uh, MPs? The MPs, yeah. If you didn't come back, in fact, I sent one of my friends to, to uh, my, my uh, parents and uh, my, my uh, in-laws, see? He loved us so much, he didn't want to go back, see? But my father-in-law, who was a W-1 uh, individual. World War I? Yeah, mm -hmm. talked to him and told him, look, you know, if you don't go back, they come hunting for you and so forth and et cetera, and besides, you got friends that are doing their duties, and I talked to them, and he went back. He went back. There's always that fear of, of what they, they were anticipating happening. Well, and his, I don't know. He, it, it's a fact was that uh, I think he was uh, very enjoyed with what he was eating and being treated. So. Had a comfortable life. He had a very comfortable life there. Sure. They gave him the, you know, the run of the thing. So sure. it was fun because he came from a place where... Uh, uh, it was tough for him. So for yeah. your four or five months in Australia, you, were you training that whole time? You trained all the time. Mm -hmm. You trained all the time. You know, there's nothing that, uh, you know, you just couldn't go and say, well, I'm going to take the day off. No such thing. 
and were you hearing during that time about other aspects of the war, such as in Europe or other areas? Absolutely. They were, uh, they were uh, very, very, uh, you know, letting you know what they want and uh, uh, telling you what happened and getting magazines, you know, welcoming the magazines. The, the papers coming from home. See? People would send you papers from oh, home? Oh, sure. Magazines and stuff like that, yeah. I mean, that's one thing they never bothered with you. And not only that, but they, uh, you, you had your radio uh, in the evening that w where told what happened, uh, you know, in Europe or in, and in Asia and so forth. They made sure that you knew what was going on. And so did you anticipate that eventually you would be a part of this? Absolutely. Uh, <laughs> that was the purpose you were there for. And were you... Were you looking forward to after four or five months to get into combat, or were you nervous about having to get back in? Well, to get let's into say it? this, as you went through the training, and uh, part of the training, when I said you, you, you dug uh, foxholes, well, not only that, but uh, they would tell you, now you getting in that hole, don't lift your head up or anything, because we're gonna show you what it's like. And there'd be a group there firing rounds at you. You think going like bees, zing, zing, zing. <laughs> so they're also showing you what the sounds were like too, right? Uh, yeah, mm -hmm. yeah. Not only the sound of uh, a bomb going off or a hand grenade, because you practice with them, or you take it out and throw it, and you, yeah. They and when you, you did that. that for practice, you were l using live ammunition. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Were there any um, casualties during training? It, only one that I know of. That's when we were in the uh, foxhole, and uh, he evidently lifted his uh, leg going up there, and he, you know, one of the rounds hit him. That's the only one that I know of. See? Did he survive? Oh, yeah. It was only, a, you know, just something that would heal for him, and he would be back, and, uh, you know, after he recovered and so forth. See? We did things like... Uh, when I talk about the, uh, where we were uh, training from land to uh, air there, uh, they were writing what we were doing, you know, so they would know how to defend uh, all over the place, not only the, the thing like that. And uh, eventually we got into New, Gu New Guinea. And after Australia, you went to New Guinea? Oh, that was a jumping off place for New Guinea. And what was New Guinea like? Well, <laughs> it was <laughs> it was beautiful uh, land. It was a you know big island is what it was, and uh, a lot of uh, trees there that uh, you could get lost in. See, in in fact, uh, and the natives, and uh, a lot of coconut trees that were found, <laughs> and uh, different kinds of fruit. And were you going to see combat in New Guinea, or did you know? We didn't know what we were going to see. They never told you uh, what, when you got there, you got there, see? And, and how did you get there? By, by ship also? Oh, yeah, mm -hmm. yeah. And uh, well, what's the distance from, uh, from Australia? Mm -hmm. And the, uh, once, you, once you got there, we got there when it was pretty well cleaned. If there were any Japanese in there, uh, I, I think the uh, whoever was in charge <laughs> let the uh, natives take care of them. <laughs> so you didn't see any combat in New Guinea. No. A and that was the that was the end of it, uh, because uh, we stayed there quite a long time, and uh, the uh, what what we assumed was that any Japanese there's one one section we did we. We set up uh, machine guns because there were no notice that there was a number of them there, and uh, we figured that at night they would come charging. See, so we had uh, sections that, like, I would spend two hours there with the machine guns, and uh, somebody else would come to receive so forth, and nothing happened. I, I think the natives. Uh, <laughs> Were the natives helpful to the Americans? 
Well, I don't know how you want to say uh, helpful. They were wonderful people. Uh, the the uh, they had their own way. The Australians were running that, but they were letting them run their, the way they wanted to live. They didn't bother with them or anything else like that. Uh, you could make friends with them. I did. And uh, the, the uh, man introduced me to his family. He says, all my wives. <laughs> he had about six or seven. Six or seven wives? And a crowd of, yeah, kids, too. And a lot of kids. Yeah, because uh, it, it, it was funny. Uh, we were in this section, we see in the day the uh, natives come, see. But what uh, one of the sergeants wanted to do was to go into their uh, where they were living mm -hmm. and see if we could get in, uh, uh, things that you could keep as souvenirs, you see. Mm -hmm. So they would follow them, and but they would lose them in the jungle because <laughs> the natives were well, so good. they knew that they, they were being caught, yeah, and they, sure. <laughs> they knew that ways of how they would lose them, see? Sure. And, uh, and of course, it was uh, on the side there, one side was this river. Uh, you could walk in it, see? Except when it began to rain, it was about eight feet high. <laughs> Were they monsoon type of rains? It, it rained. Let, let me put it this way. We, we uh, for a while, see, the, 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 uh, the, the, what we did was the water, well, you could wade, wade in it, you know, up to ankle. And uh, decided that uh, we'd have uh, fixed things around, figure so that we can get water in there and go swimming in, in the thing, see? So it was a bad storm one night, and we heard this boom, see? We woke up in the morning, and our uh, uh, swimming thing was all spread all over the place. The, we look at the water was about eight feet high. <laughs> you had made sort of a swimming hole? Yeah. Wow. It wasn't a swimming hole. It was on top of the, sure. the thing that just blew. And it even ruined some of the, uh, it uh, ruined some of the, uh, uh, whatever you want to call it there, uh, uh, trees that were bearing fruit and stuff mm -hmm. like that. They came down. They came down and because the, of the yeah, high then, winds? The, the water pawned them down just around the edge. The, sure. The, uh, the natives were uh, upset about that because, you know, their banana places and thing had come down. They'd have to wait now for another section, another time when... Another they, season? Yeah. Because their crop was yeah. ruined? Yeah. The only thing that stood up were the uh, coconuts. Mm. And you should see them go up there. To, to, they, put a, they put one of these big knives, I forgot what they called them, put it in their mouth, mouth and they grab the trees and then they... <laughs> Come with the uh, thing, they come up there, get up there, hug it, and come down, and they bounce. See, the large knife. Well, the large knife. Yeah, yeah. they uh, they had one that you could uh, hold it in your hand and knock somebody's just one whack off. You could knock his neck off or her neck off. But that know? didn't happen. No. Yeah. The uh, the thing is, we got excited there in one section there where we hit gunfire. See. And uh, you know, we ran for our rifles and everything else, but <laughs> it didn't last long. And uh, was it Japanese? No, <laughs> it was our own. It <laughs> you know, Americans are very. Uh, what do you want to say? Uh, you could do this. These Southern boys finally decide, uh, got to the point where they. Uh, were able to take the coconuts and uh, the uh, uh, milk that was in there turned that to liquor. Oh. See, and so there were two sections in there and uh, they sold it, all right? So one section lowered its, uh, its amount that they were charging and the other section got ticked off so they went and started to shoot the other place. The, uh, so there other, was a little uh, in-house rivalry? Uh, yeah. Yeah, actually, we thought we'd have to go, you know, up, but no. But it was okay. Yeah, it was okay, and when the when it was found out, the both things were canceled. <laughs> now, did you go to the Philippines also? Yeah. Mm -hmm. um, after New Guinea. After New Guinea, yeah. Um, how how did they tell you? on a daily basis or did they say, okay, next week we're leaving for, how did they tell you you were going? Or you just, no. just <laughs> You just get sudden? called out and uh, either called out by the 
so the uh, sergeant uh, yelling, uh, you know, all hands and uh, so forth and et cetera. And, uh, or you would, be, you would have a notice, too, that you were going to get out of there somewhere, no matter where you were. You would be told, pack up all your things. You'd pack them up there, whatever had that you had to take would be there. But they would never tell you what date you were going to move out of there. And so suddenly they're telling you to pack up. Yeah, to and, pick up your packs and And move you didn't on. know where you were going to go, but you ended up going when to When you the, got aboard, you would go wherever you, once you got aboard, you would go. And then would they explain what you were going to be in store for? Or? Nothing at all Nothing. like that. Not just. So you went then to, new, to the Philippines. Well, in the Philippines, we, we had a, uh, uh, got hit by the end of a uh, storm in, in, in there where the, uh, <laughs> Where the boat started, a, the boat, the ship began going, taking water on, you know, washing it on. We had to go down the hold, see, and and they cut, they uh, get all of us up. Only the sailors were up there, and then they uh, uh, they, they uh, on the uh, you know going down on the stairway and stuff like that. They had that covered. Nobody could get up. We all had to stay down there, you know. And, of course, the ship was going up, bang, this way, that way, and I hear the bang, bang, bang. I says, what's that banging on there? I said, what did they put on the there? Anybody see it? You know, we talk. Someone says, yeah. He says, what? He says, 50-gallon cans of, uh, <laughs> of uh, well, mo you know, motor oil and uh, uh, bombs. I said, oh, that's all we need. He said, what do you mean? I says, one spark, I said, we're going to fly. <laughs> was it scary, though, for all of you being down there in this storm? It was a little uncomfortable. Thinking, here we are, supposedly in war. And you couldn't see you... anything. That was yeah. bothering you. because, And what was bothering with this bang, bang, bang as the ship went back and as forth. As it went back and forth. forth. like that, yeah. How long did it, that last? I have no idea. It was some, some kind that, uh, you know, sometimes. Yeah, that was, no, that was the end of the, uh, the of, uh, Storm. From the end of the storm. Oh, yeah, the waves were coming all over. You know, the ship was taking water. Do you remember there. where in the Philippines you landed? Uh, yeah, in its capital. And uh, what was well, outside the capital. Outside of the capital. In, 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 in. And at that point in time, did you know that the Japanese were there? They were up uh, in what would be in the, uh, what they call the summer capital when we got in. We got in their natural capital, which was a mess all the way around there because you could see houses that had been bombed. And now, would that have been Manila? In Manila, yeah. Mm -hmm. And so seeing... And you could also smell the uh, <laughs> smell you didn't want to smell. <laughs> now, what would it have been? From bodies or yeah. from, from the bombs, from explosions? No, from the, from the bodies. They, they, they did pour uh, whatever it had they had with them that they you know, to with them, but you could still smell it and knew what was happening. So did you guys talk amongst yourselves about what you were facing? Do you remember talking about it, or are you just doing what you had just, to do? Just doing, following orders, that's what you had to do. That was the, uh, you know, you, don't, you, didn't, uh, you didn't challenge or anything like that. So once you're in, in Manila, did you travel by by foot, or were you in trucks, or how did you go? We had both, trucks and foot, but for the most part it was foot. Uh, actually, we were quite a distance away from their summer capital. And did you know that that's where you had to go? Yeah, but at that time it was pretty close to the, uh, to the end of uh, the war there. And you were hearing that, that it was? No, we didn't, didn't hear anything, that. but we knew on the uh, you know, note the uh, radio and so forth. Doug was doing a good job. Doug MacArthur. Oh, sure. MacArthur. <laughs> and actually, um, you you there's a book on on him. You know, on the, in the in the library here. You should read it. I mean, and you will you'll have a change of. Do uh, you'll be surprised to seeing that the author said he was shy. <laughs> That's not what the paper said he was. <laughs> had you ever seen him in action or met him? Eyeball to eyeball. What was that like? Because huh? he, was, he was sort of an icon, wasn't he? Well, let, let me say it this way, because uh, I spent quite a bit of time in the uh, Philippines, and uh, 
he was nothing like the pr press said he was. Tell us for you what he was like. Well, he was like any other person that you would see. Uh, in, the, in the fact, uh, well, I gave, what's his name? Uh, Harry, is it? Uh, that put the pictures downstairs? I gave him a pictures of uh, MacArthur when he posed for uh, people for the uh, GI. Oh, here at the uh, library, yes. Yeah, mm -hmm. uh, I mean, if you were walking along the uh, street, you know, and he was walking by, and you gave him the highball, as we used to say, and he would return it, and uh, it would uh, he would look and see what uh, whether you were uh, just a, a non, um, you know didn't have any stripes or lieutenant or what you were. He called you by good morning, uh, corporal, good morning, the pirate, and so forth. And at or that evening, or whatever right. it was. At that point, what was your rank? This at was what, in rate, 1945 I, now? I, at that rate, I was uh, a sergeant. Sergeant. Yeah. And so I, uh, one of the things we got, we got the good news. When we got there, uh, in, where in, the, in this area where he was, uh, there was a, a whole group of uh, GIs there. Where they were going, I don't know. I asked. Nobody went. They were upset. <laughs> but that was when uh, we woke up that when they left, uh, we, we had other, uh, the officers, uh, you know, got the groups, see, and put us in different spaces where you had your, where you were a sentinel, see. And uh, that was all the way around because uh, they had their uh, places down down on the other end. Or of the you, island? Not on the island, on, on where we were, you know, down the street. They had the uh, offices so where they had their uh, woman going in and <laughs> things like that. And uh, also, uh, I think the uh, commander-in-chief knew also that they were uh, bringing liquor in there, and, but he didn't... Uh, bother with them. A, but during the war, the Philippines was a pretty hot spot, wasn't it? Yes. And did you face any c combat with your unit? When we, when we went there, that, that was, the, they were cleaned out of where we landed. Right. Okay. In fact, what they were doing was they were uh, uh, putting uh, their uh, uh, things in, in the place. Uh, for example, the, uh, where the uh, government uh, lived at that, well, lived or worked at that time, they were fixing it because the, uh, they chased the Japanese right through the thing and they were shooting them and you could see the uh, scars on the uh, beautiful uh, uh, tables that uh, they had to uh, fix. In the that buildings? That was not mahogany, that was the other type of wood mm -hmm. that they had out there, it was the more expensive type of wood if you bought it here. See, beautiful. and. Uh, you know, uh, well uh, uh, made, you know, and, and nice to sit in and watching it. Uh, you know, there were works of art. Sure. And walking the tables and the. And some of them you know, got the, damage from. Oh, yeah. yeah. Well, our, our men were shooting to get them out of there. Sure. Because they were running away and they were right. <laughs> trying to get them. One so another. that was happening as you were coming in? Yeah. And then you said you had to go to the summer. You were, you were we never got to the summer. We stayed where we were because... And where uh, was that? When I said... Uh, out of Manila and... Fer right in Manila itself. Okay. Right in Manila itself. And in one section, you know, it was quite a big place, see? Uh, when I talked about those people that were leaving, yes. we were being marched to another place, see? And at that place, we got placed here, there, and everywhere else, all the way around, see? I asked, who's there? Nobody told you, see? So you are placed as sentinels, you said. As of, a sentinel, yeah. yeah. And, and I was at one place. And uh, the, the uh, no, in the middle of the night or even after that, but anyway, it was dark. But, but morning came. See, and there's this nice house, you see, and there's gates outside, high gates, um, oh, beautiful, and going down to the barn. And, uh, you know, I look and say, who the hell lives in this house? Must be something important if I'm over here, see. And in the morning, 
you see this uh, Cadillac coming in, I said, boy. <laughs> Some VIP. <laughs> yeah, quite a VIP. I look up at the thing to see the five stars around there. I says, oh boy. <laughs> I said, the commander in chief, and as he come down, I pull up my... And that gun. was MacArthur. Yeah, and he gave me the, you know, I come with the, with my uh, gun, my, my rifle, not mm -hmm. a gun. She call it a gun, they blow your head off. Mm -hmm. And... Uh, bring it up in the salute way, and he says, he said, good morning. He looked up, he says, well, he says, I guess we're gonna have another Philippine uh, day. <laughs> Which meant a beautiful day? Yeah. Mm -hmm. <laughs> yeah. And how long were you a sentinel in Manila? Uh, I never counted, I never counted. Uh, we went uh, months in there. Were there close calls? Were the Japanese still around there? or uh, They had been pushed back. They never come in. In fact, from the time that he said, uh, if you watch the uh, picture where, uh, where the cameras that went with him on the thing where they were live, where he was in the uh, picture I showed you on this one. Sure. Yeah, when he hit the shore, he had an amplifier with him. He says, I have returned. Come to the colors. But you weren't there uh, at that point. At, at that point, was we that, had, uh, no, the, he, we right. weren't, we, because he, he was living with his wife and child there. Mm -hmm. And he never had his wife with him unless it was safe. And now, was he, correct me, was he with his wife and child in Manila? Yeah. So Not only that, but he also had her in uh, Australia, right. wherever he went. Stay that it was, t t in fact, uh, it uh, when he went to the... Uh, Ab, um, the other section there. In Manila. In, not yeah. in Manila, where the French, uh, uh, not the, yeah, the French and uh, other uh, European things. There was another, uh, the Asians were in there, where he went and kicked them out of there. See, he sent a letter to his wife, uh, which is in the book there. You see, he says, in two weeks, I'll have you over here. Sure. <laughs> so did you see direct combat yourself? We saw the results. Was that tough for you? Well, it, it, it was uh, what you were looking at is this. Uh, you saw beautiful buildings that, uh, y you know, were uh, half in the ground and uh, half on the ground and the other half in beautiful, uh, you know. And the same way with uh, the old town that they had when the uh, immigrants went there, of course, the... Uh, Natives gave them a lot of trouble, so they built a, a little town in there. This is where the Japanese uh, went in there. They holed up, and of course they had these, these stones going up, uh, you know, to keep uh, the natives out there. And it ran 16 feet, you know, up. They had to blow that up with 155s, you know, <laughs> to get in, in so there. So were you part of that? No, okay. no. Just to see what, you know, you got the answer of what they see. You look all now. All during this are. time, were there Japanese prisoners around you? you you'll see one or two in that. But if you did you? Up. Were you part of? A no, unit they were all rushed in. By the time we came in, things were over. I mm -hmm. mean, it, it uh, the the Filipinos were out there uh, doing their things, which they couldn't do when. Uh, Meaning you know, what? Getting, trying to get back to business? Getting or? back in business, repairing the, uh, you know, getting material, uh, if they could find it to repair, yeah. Now, at, so that those watching this know, was this after the bomb, atomic bomb had been dropped? That you were in the Philippines? No, that was after they knocked, that, that was well after, that was... Uh, uh, but see, even after the other back that we had the uh, Vietnam, when they dropped that bomb. No, when 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 um, the Enola Gay dropped the bomb, and and it basically ended the war with Hiroshima and that. Were yeah, you, that was in that was in uh, Japan. Right. Were yeah, you in yeah. the Philippines at that time? Yes. Yes. Did you hear about that happening? Well, it, let's, let's say this, that uh, there was at the, uh, at the center of the uh, 
Philippines there, where they had the government was was in there. In Manila. In, in Manila. Yeah. Uh, he had uh, his uh, Magata had his office there, yeah. uh, where he worked and so forth. See, and uh, there were amplifiers out there. We were expecting for something. See, and a whole group of GIs around there because the the word went around that there was going to end. See, and uh, he came out. And he says, I don't have any news as yet. He says, when I have it, when I have anything, he says, I'll come out and I'll tell you. Mm -hmm. See? And then he went in and somebody says, oh, yeah. <laughs> you know? And then did he come out after to let you all know what had happened? Uh, well, he didn't, but they, they announced it that, uh, you know, over the thing had come out. It was a big thing. It went all over the damn place. You could, you know, hear. He didn't have to do it. <laughs> the noise. You yeah. mean the noise of the GIs the noise, knowing the noise that everything, everything was yeah. done? Yeah. So after the Philippines, did you, during that time, were you able to take any kind of what we might call vacation or R&R? &R? Not you there. Weren't. So the whole time you were gone, were you able to see your wife at all? No. At the, you didn't. But you corresponded with letters? Oh, letters, yeah. Mm -hmm. Letters, uh, that, that they allowed. I mean, that, uh, they wanted you to write. Do you feel you were properly trained and equipped for what you witnessed and what you were a part of? Yeah, in, in some cases uh, that, that would happen. And in other cases, you, you said, uh, you know, go on your own and you could do a lot better, see? And in fact, uh, in, uh, was it in, yeah, it was in Australia. I got sent to uh, a school at that time they had uh, uh, in uh, New Guinea uh, to uh, be aware of what the uh, Japanese aircrafts looked like and to go back and uh, teach the uh, Outfit just in case. On what to look for. And what to look for. How to I, identify yeah. them. So I could identify them and, and you went through that. And then they sent me, uh, that was the first one I went to and I enjoyed it because uh, those uh, cooks over there, they really knew how to make <laughs> <laughs> So going to school was sort of pleasurable because you get fed well. Yeah. 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 Do you remember well, the what, Army, what... let me tell you, you'd be surprised at uh, how many schools the Army have. Yeah. You know, and somebody's surprised when you say that, uh, you know, so-and-so went to the war college. It's like, a war college? Yeah, they got a war college. They learn how to, <laughs> yeah. <laughs> yeah. Do sp for specialties. Yeah. yeah, for specialties. And the other, the other school I went to was that uh, the... Uh, uh, was the uh, notice that the uh, Japanese were getting a little, uh, uh, I don't know how you want to call it, but they had tons of uh, gas to, uh, you know, throw down. And uh, so to go and uh, uh, defend against it, you know. So you went to school to learn how to do that? Yeah, on, on uh, you know, training for what you do if you get, even got a smell of gas, you put on your gas mask and stuff like that and, and be able to know which type it was. So not only did you, you have to use your gas mask, but you actually knew which ones might be more potent than others? Oh, definitely. Mm -hmm. And as a matter of fact, the ones that were uh, not or just one, they let you figure, they put it on your uh, arm and... Uh, you could feel it? Oh, yeah. <laughs> no question. Burning? <laughs> yeah, it was burning. But you never came into direct... They never did. They never threw it. Uh, you know, it was... Uh, Thank goodness. Well, because uh, they, they got, a, they got a, uh, a measure that we had more than they had, and we would knock it on them all the way down. So they didn't do it, see. Mm -hmm. So once you heard from MacArthur and others that basically the war was ending. How, how much longer did you stay in the Philippines after that? Uh, let's see, this was uh, in the fall, and sometime into the fall, and they said you would be home by Christmas. And you were? Yeah, they promised. I, I was 25th, I got the date for you then. Right, yeah. right. In, in fact, it was uh, when I was uh, getting ready to leave. See, I had this, I was shaving, 
And I see this face come out, you know, and he's looking. I said, what the hell, this guy is a bonny, you know, he's come from Europe. He's <laughs> it kept coming, it kept coming. All of a sudden, I got tapped, and he says, uh, do, you, do you have uh, uh, relatives in, in uh, Framingham? And I look, I said, oh, it was my cousin. Really? <laughs> he came back from Europe. He had come back. Yeah, and he says, how are you going to get home? I says, well, I'm probably going to take the bus. He says, no, nah, don't do that. He says, they're coming down to pick me up. He says, and, and uh, he says, yeah, my father, he says, would love to have you, uh, you know, see you. So, was this when you were in Boston? And, no, this was when we were uh, uh, out in the same camp that we came, we, we went there. And, uh, I forgot what the hell they called it. Okay. But it was a, uh, uh, a place where the uh, army always, anything had to go with the... Uh, Not Camp Devons. Camp Devons, oh, that okay. was it, Camp Devons. Okay, it's now Fort Devons. It actually yeah. is now closed, but yeah. okay, you went out of Camp Devons. Yeah. Um, and then went back again. But did you, when you came back from the Philippines, did you come back in through California or New uh, York? Do you remember? No, uh, we, uh, we, we went by, uh, by boat. I forgot where we went, or oh, by ship. You just got a boat, they knock your head off. Uh, and uh, we wound up in um, uh, California. California. And from there, they flew us home. Were you excited about coming home? Yeah. Yeah, I was going to have a nice time with my wife. <laughs> sure. Well, you missed her, obviously. And while you were gone, did she work? Oh, sure. What did, how, what did she do for work? Uh, she worked in the uh, factory where they made dresses and... Uh, for women and girls, and she's good. She still is. <laughs> so you you were discharged from Camp Devons, Christmas Day, right? Nineteen forty-five. Yeah. At what rank at, at that point in time? Sergeant. Sergeant. Yeah. Actually, the first time that I was there, I put in. Uh, uh, for uh, going to officer school, see. But I stayed there a little too long, and they said, so, well, the next place you could go to, you can do it, see. You can reply, you know, fly again. Never had that opportunity. <laughs> you didn't have the opportunity to yeah. continue on to, to officer So uh, yeah. you thought about making it a career? Well, I might have. I mean, I don't know. It depended on uh, what uh, it was. If you look around, the army wasn't bad when things were, you know. When there was no war. Yeah. But you made the decision then not to, or you weren't given the opportunity? Well, when it depended on what you got uh, for the uh, opportunity. As I moved up, the, the greatest sergeant, things got better for me, you see. Uh, in fact, I went in, I was nothing but, uh, you know, just somebody that uh, was not. Then I got a stripe, I got a little authority, I got more stripes, and <laughs> they got better, <laughs> see? Yeah. So if I got the, uh, the metal on the, uh, the, the thing, it would have been better and better. And I might have even, uh, you know, got to the point where uh, I could have gone to uh, West Point. So I, might have, I might have done it if, you know, if I got back climbing up the, uh, the thing. But did you decide at that point to leave the army? Oh yeah. Okay. Yeah. Because you had been gone so long, or well, not 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 only that I'd been gone so long, but it was the fact that uh, now I was going home and uh, things were going to be different. Uh, in in the fact that uh, the uh, there was an opportunity there because by that time the government. Uh, stated that all people that were being discharged could uh, go to college if they wanted to go if uh, you know and I said well uh, <laughs> so you wanted to use it was it the GI bill back then the GI. so you feeling you mentioned wanting to see your wife coming yeah. home um, when you did come home did you discuss what you had seen or witnessed during your service and, and in the Philippines and New Guinea and things of that nature? Did you discuss it with family or friends? No. Did you sort of, life goes on, is that the kind of 
attitude you had or? Well, that was what we had all the way along. I mean, when, when we got noticed that we had to do something that is, oh, you know, this was, it says, it was always somebody says, look, it's one step closer to home. So sure. you, you know why you were happy to, you know, do it, see. When you got home, did you join any unit of the military reserve? No. Did you join any veterans organizations, such as the American Legion or I, any of those? I joined the uh, veterans uh, uh, organization. And like VFW? Uh, then I dropped out. And you mentioned earlier that you did receive benefits for going back to college. Well, that's the, uh, the government GI paid uh, for the uh, whatever they charged. And, um, I mean, I had to buy my own books, but they, sure. they can pay. And me. you went back to college, you, you got your law degree? I, I uh, got uh, finished the, uh, had to go be pre-law, see? So I finished okay. that, and it didn't take too long. And, uh, now wait a minute. I got talked into uh, going to, uh, my, my wife talked me into, she says, take a couple of courses, see, during the summer. So I did. And I enjoyed it. So in the fall, I uh, signed up. Uh, you know, I had all my credits to go to law school. Yeah. And you went to law school I in Boston? I went to law school, yeah, and I graduated. And did you practice law? I practiced very well. And uh, once I got it, I went for training with my uncle, who was a lawyer. He was doing well. And in fact, he did well even during the Depression. He put $10,000 down on the table for a violin, <laughs> one of those extra special. <laughs> and how long did you practice law? Uh, let's see. I'm, I'm still doing it. You are? <laughs> yeah. And, and you said earlier. Well, I'm not, you know, it, it's. Uh, You've never really retired. I didn't retire from it. Okay. In fact, I'm filling my, uh, for my, uh, let's say, uh, 90, yeah, 98. 1998? 1988. Uh, not 1998. Let's see. Uh, in 1964, I became an attorney. And since then, I've been an attorney. And now, on my uh, desk at home, I have to uh, fill out this, this coming year. So you have to keep your, your certification up? Every year. Every year. Yeah. And what are you, 90 years old now, Joe? Yeah. God bless you. Thank you. That's great. <laughs> Do you attend any reunions of your old outfit? No. Uh, they're not in, in uh, doing it anymore because it was dying out. But did you, re did you attend I, them? I didn't because it was mostly uh, going uh, out to the... Uh, Southern area. What unit were you? Do you remember? I think it was a 350th uh, something or other. <laughs> How important to you was serving in the military? Well, it was very important. I mean, it was something I figured that I was doing that uh, for my country in appreciation. In the, uh, you know, let me put it this way, my parents were immigrants. And I lived in a, in a section of Boston, well, all Boston anyway, <laughs> all kind of immigrants there, see. In fact, I went to Boston uh, uh, English, and it was probably the only, uh, one of the very few schools in uh, uh, high schools in America that uh, took everybody in, Chinese, Japanese, uh, Italians, Irish, <laughs> you name them, we had it all. <laughs> Very, very integrated. Huh? Very integrated. It yeah. was very integrated. As a matter of fact, surprisingly, the most popular uh, member we had in, in, in that school, he, he was Afro American. Mm -hmm. and, Amer and eventually he had problems. He would go to, the, to uh, summer school and come back again. See. But he says, I'm going to graduate from the, which he did. he did. And he became an alumni, and he also became the president of the alumni association. That, that's how they loved him. <laughs> sure, sure. Of course, we had, you know, going to high school, we had some tough guys, you know, they would tell the teacher, I'll meet you downstairs. 
<laughs> they would do that to the teacher. Oh my. Oh yeah, yeah they did. That someone when he was on the floor, someone says, Henry, didn't they tell you that, that he was the middle <laughs> the middle champ high school uh, college uh, of boxer? <laughs> really? Really? <laughs> Only lasted one punch. <laughs> Do you feel in some way that being in the military affected your life as you got older? I don't know whether th that uh, you always carry it with you, mm -hmm. okay? I think you, you have the, uh, let, let me put it this way, that you, you have that uh, feeling that you always have and had at that time, okay, that it was your country, okay? And the heck with other countries was a feeling that you have. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. It was your country, do or die, and you had to do it. And even today, uh, I will complain about the fact that uh, in, in places, they don't take the, uh, the, 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 the Pledge of Allegiance. And in fact, I went to one of my uh, things there only this year and was surprised that they're very happy that, to do it, at, at what the... Uh, they did for the uh, one they were voting on what they were going to do for the for the year at uh, Wilson would, School. Yeah. Oh, at the school. Well, at the school, mm -hmm. yeah. That's that the first schools, time I heard it. Some that, schools don't do the Pledge of Allegiance, yeah. and that's bothersome to you. Yeah, mm -hmm. yeah, it is, because it tells us what we are. We, we have, we have uh, representatives in Washington that talk about our democracy. Well, we're not a democracy. We're a republic. And you won't find that word democracy in our Constitution. And in fact, if you read the uh, tenth essay of uh, uh, Madison, see, he tells you why. He says, democracy start well, but eventually they become mob role, and what the law is, what the mob wants. And you can see that all over. Here they're talking more and more about our democracy. Even Reader's Digest, there they sent uh, uh, had a net, uh, 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 what the heck they, they had people go out there take what uh, Europe thought about uh, our democracy. They loved it. I said, how could they love our republic? Hmm. They weren't loving anything. That's Which, why I I I, uh, I say that uh, even uh, our demo our representatives don't know what in the hell they're talking about. See, and so I will tell anybody this, and I'm not ashamed to say it. They do things that are brilliantly stupid. Hmm. Looking back, are there any memorable experiences or persons or um, a humorous experience or any of that, one in particular that comes to mind with you? Oh, there are a number of them, uh, you know, per persons. In fact, in one person, there's a picture in in there of uh, my uh, friend and a beautiful uh, girl. And uh, he was very much uh, in love with her, but um, she didn't want to. Well, of course, it may be that uh, he, he was Jewish and uh, she was, uh, I, I don't know what uh, thing she was, but. Uh, was, was she in Australia? Or? No, this, this was in, uh, uh, Florida, and he he fell in love with a girl, and, and he committed and he, suicide afterwards. He did. Yeah. Do you think it was because of the mix of religion that might have been a problem? Well, I don't know. I never talked to him after that. You know, in the in the thing when we uh, all split up, we didn't all go in the same place. That's the. Could it have been something he also witnessed during the war? Did he have a difficult time? He, he never got there. He never got there. Yeah. So it was even before he, he he was sent over. Yeah. Yeah. Oh, he he was uh, like she was a beautiful, beautiful girl. I that mean, had sometime. to be difficult for her. Huh? That had to be difficult. for I her. I don't know. I never, mm -hmm. you know, saw her again or mm -hmm. in an, anything. But. As we finish up this interview, uh, is there anything that you would like to share or anything we haven't asked or a comment you would like to make, not only to your family, but to those who will be watching this tape as you conclude today? 
Well, if there is anything I, I want to say, the, it, I think uh, we were, as a country, we were very, very uh, lucky that we had some wonderful representatives who knew what to do. And I mean, if you, if you talk to them like uh, Roosevelt, I mean, he did good. You look at our uh, represent like MacArthur, terrific. And history's greatest general, as far as I'm concerned. And, uh, uh, and from then on. But lately, we have people that uh, are representing, not representing us, they're representing the vested interest. They're getting anything and everything they want. I mean, we should go back again. You know, and the other thing is, you, you get a guy like, uh, what's his name there, uh, fired uh, MacArthur, <laughs> who was president at that time, and fired him. I mean, just because the president may be the commander in chief of the, that doesn't make him a, a general, see? And uh, had no conception about war. Would and, it have been Truman? Huh? Truman? Truman, yeah. Mm -hmm. And uh, what's the other guy that was the, uh, uh, got to be a president that was the commander in chief? Eisenhower. Eisenhower. Mm -hmm. I mean, he didn't know anything about war. I mean. mm. <laughs> you know? Well, Joseph A. Tedisco, we want to thank you for coming in today and thank you for sharing your story with well, us. Yeah, welcome. And that's a pleasure. Thank you. And as I told you, it probably won't give anybody else another. Uh, <laughs> thing that I've done, you know. Another interview. Oh, yeah, I've got about 18 uh, pages of acknowledgments for things that I've done. Well, thank you. <laughs> You're welcome. You're welcome.